Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 123, we're going to talk about how to buy a tube amp. Well, part one, because this is a big topic, so it's going to take at least a couple of episodes to get through it. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so you're just about to finally have some extra cash and you've always wanted a tube amp. And your idea of a great tube amp is one that is just filled full of vacuum tubes. Well, hold on just a minute and I'll walk you through a logical process of choosing the right type of tube amp for your listening room and your budget. So it all starts with the tubes, right? I mean, after all, the tubes are the amplifiers. Wrong. Well, I mean, yes, they are the amplifiers, but no, it doesn't start with the tubes. Okay, well, how about how much power I need? Nope. Okay, what about starting with the speakers? Well, almost. Actually, it starts with the listening room you currently have. Not the one you imagine you'll have someday, but the one you've got right now. Okay, let's run through the options. We'll start with a small room. So let's say you're in a dorm, um, a quiet space, you're renting a room in a house, and you've got to be quiet or you'll be renting another room in another house, um, or, you know, you're younger and you're just hanging out in your bedroom a lot. Really, you should be thinking, in my opinion, about a headphone amplifier. They're compact. You can get great sounding headphones that are affordable. I mean, a great speaker system, a pair of really good speakers, 10 grand, 20 grand, 40 grand. A great pair of headphones? What did we pay for that amazing, uh, um, what were they, 1000 V2 hyphenments? Yes. Uh, uh, what were they? Were they a thousand bucks or? Somewhere around there. Maybe they were closer to two. I forget. <laughs> but either way, the, a really nice pair of headphones will cost far less than a, a comparable set of speakers. Absolutely. And there's no sound, right? So it's dead quiet. Well, there'll be some bleed through sound. Mm. But, but you're not going to wake up your neighbors with them. Yeah, exactly. And tubes rule in a headphone amp. Oh my God, I couldn't. I, re I still can remember the first time I listened to Charles's prototype kit headphone amp um, version one. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> it's still coming along. <laughs> because we're actually building version two. Hopefully this week we'll get going on it, but there's lots going on. So who knows? Um, I just, I mean, I'm used to high quality sound. I listen to it all day long. Well, not all day long, but during the day I'm listening to customers tubes and various um, amplifiers that we have. And I, you know, my way, main way to relax is to sit down with some tube gear and listen to you know, uh, Miles Davis is kind of blue from start to finish. And then if I got time, I'll do it all over again. Um, so when I heard, I heard the prototype, um, headphone amp, I was just like floored. I mean, the, I've never heard such a great sounding headphone amplifier. And I suspect that there's lots and lots of good sounding headphone amplifiers out there. So, so this is a really good option if you're in a small room. What about if you're in a regular sized room? Something, you know, 10 feet by 14 feet, maybe three by four and a half or four and a half and a bit meters. Um, that's going to be something like a typical living room. You're living in a good sized two bedroom apartment. You got a small home or it could be a rec room in the basement of a home. You've got options now because now you're not in such a small space that you are limited to how big the speaker system is going to be. It could be a very compact speaker system, or it could be something quite bigger. What in the old days used to be called sort of a concert or grande system. <laughs> but um, your options really are two. You can go with something like an integrated amplifier. That's just a preamp and a power amp combo, right? So they're 
Sometimes there's extra things thrown in there, yep. but that's the base of it. I mean, in my day, and my day was a long time ago, you always got a phono preamp. And you often got uh, a really complicated control preamp that could handle tape in, tape out. You could monitor your tape. Taping stuff was huge back then. Now it's just like, you know, turned it into ones and zeros and digitize it. <laughs> Nobody is taping much anyways. Um, or, and this is going to be your most cost affordable option. Manufacturers, when they combine equipment into one box, uh, they can they can save money on some big components like the power transformers. If you use the same power transformer for a power and a preamp, then you don't need two. And if it's a fancier bit of kit, the believe it or not, the largest single cost is ch chassis. The chassis is the most expensive part on a fancy amplifier, especially if it's something that's custom made or bent out of sheet metal or something like that. Those things are expensive to design and, and manufacture. I was thinking more like Italian race car, <laughs> you know, styling. <laughs> but anyways, and there is stuff out there like that. So, you know, you can add two or four grand to the price of a, of a quality amp just because it's got you know, some Italian styling on it. So anyways, I mean, it has to have the build quality too. Uh, your other big option here is separates. So you could have a preamplifier. Everyone calls it a preamp or you, and a power amp. And everyone calls that a monoblock these days. Now you got more flexibility with this option. Maybe you're going to get better sound. And you're almost certainly going to be paying more bucks, right? Because you're going to, even though you'll have a, a preamp, just like in here, you're going to have to have a pair of monoblocks. Now, years ago, it was fairly common to combine monoblocks into a stereo pair. Nowadays, nobody really is into that. And pretty much you're buying uh, two mono channels, right? So you're going to buy a left and a right channel amplifier. If they're combined, it's probably already an integrated amp with the preamp in there. Yeah, that's that's what's become the norm. Now, what if you've got a concert hall? Um, a full basement rec room. So, you know, 800 square feet. Um, I can't do that in meters, but anyways, <laughs> big. You know what I mean? The whole floor of a house, basically. Or you've got, you'd like to do outdoor events. You know, you've got a You've got a pool, lucky you, <laughs> and you like to do pool parties. And trying to amplify outdoors in open air means you need power. Or you've got a mansion, and, you know, good on you. But what are your options? Well, you, you could probably find a big enough integrated amplifier to meet your needs, but most likely you're going to go with separates because even though you'll have the same preamplifier, the great, same great one that maybe... Uh, this person chose, you're going to have a much, much bigger power amp. And in, in this case, you're definitely going to be spending more dollars. But, you know, if you've got that size of venue, if you can afford that kind of space, then, you know, drop us a line. We'll fly into any major city and, and <laughs> get you hooked up. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a consultation and set you up with some custom gear. That's not a problem. We can handle that. Uh, especially if it's a little warm, because we've dropped below zero Jeez. Celsius. Yeah, and which, that's not normal here, so it's it's chilly here right now. And it's annoying, too, because traditionally where we live in the Pacific Northwest, spring normally breaks around March the 1st. It can delay, you know, and tease, but it never goes well below zero, and it is. So, anyways, such is life. Now... In the next part, we're going to take we're going to take this the next step down, and we're going to actually start looking at the various types of amplifiers and the number of tubes and the type of tubes they take. It's really what I wanted to talk about, but this is the backstory. So, stay tuned for part two. Now, what's been happening over at Melatone Kits? Well, we just finished the GU50 build series, finally, and we have some test builders that have finished their kits. Right behind you. Actually, somebody beat you. Somebody beat me to it, and I'm not surprised at all. It was taking a while, and, and they were anxious to hear their amplifiers and, well, tell them what they sent us. <laughs> well, one of the test builders who got the... There, there is a, a small award. It doesn't involve any cash or tubes, but in our... Uh, master uh, sales book. Each amp gets re gets a serial number. 
and whoever finishes first is recorded. It's just a matter of point of pride, I guess. And I let the person know that they've they've won. So, uh, but he did something that has actually happened before, uh, which is really lovely. He filmed his first tracks, put it up on his YouTube channel. He filmed them quite well as uh, as well. Yeah, well, you can see his toes sort of tapping, <laughs> but it's a great video. And it's a nice looking system. The sound is really quite good. So we're going to put a link below this video so you can link up to it if you'd like. And there's also a link in the store in the GU50 listing to that video. And because we're starting to see the test builders finish, we're going to have reviews soon to talk about. And this is the time now when I send out a short questionnaire to the test builders because we really look forward to hearing their comments. Every single test builder has added something to improve the quality of the kits moving forward. So a big thank you to all of our test builders, past and present. We are so grateful for you. You help improve every kit we put out. Well, Charles, let's take a look and see what came in this week. All right. We're actually holding back. We got something really pretty amazing in, but we still have to finish some research. And, um, and next week, probably next week, we're going to show you this too. Yeah, we want to be sure we know what we're talking about with it. So let's get these arrayed here. Okay, so first of all, speaking of interesting tubes, we've got this nice looking uh, triangle. Oh, let me get that better on screen here. And this is an octal tube. So this is a triangle branded, but this is actually a tube made by Tungsol. And some of you may recognize this. Some of Tungsol's early tubes had this gray glass coating on there and you can actually see a little bit of the chrome sneaking out the bottom here as well maybe on camera it's it's pretty light i was trying to look for it the other day and i couldn't see it but maybe i just know it's it right got to be down there and what this is is a 12 sl7 tube so the 12 sl7 of course is just the 12 volt version of the 6 sl7 and finding a tongue saw 6 sl7 that's new old stock is incredibly difficult these days especially these really early versions yeah they are high demand they're highly sought after tubes and i don't think they made very many of them probably not but we were able to find a, a nice number of new old stock triangle branded tubes. I don't think they're from the same sleeve, but they're all from the same manufacturer and they're all the same type. Let's take a look at that box here. Do we even know who Triangle is? I, I think they were just a rebrander, yeah. but a fairly old one. I think you're right there too. But it, obviously they were rebranding really nice tubes because Tungsol made some of the best tubes in North America. And there isn't much else to show on here, but it is a nice looking box. Triangle A made in USA radio tube. The big thing is I've got a phono preamplifier in development that will be a universal phono preamp and it will be able to play both the 6SL7 and the 12SL7. Which is why we're talking about these tubes, of course. Yeah. So these are, are a really nice find and it just shows you the availability of some of the tubes that are off the beaten path a little ways. Right. Now we've got two tubes that look like the same thing. Can you tell the difference between them? Well, they're clearly both Sylvanias. They're clearly both nine pins. And they're tall boys. And they're tall boys. The plates look the same. What do we have here? Well, this one is a 6GU7, and this one is a 12BH7. So the GU7 is probably not something you've heard of before, but anybody that is or has a 12AU7 amplifier or something that takes a 12AU7 has almost definitely heard of the 12BH7. All it is is a tall bottle equivalent of a 12AU. It's considered a premium equivalent to it. People really like how they sound. And we found some. And we found some. We have some variety in here. We've got some Sylvanias and a few others from different brands. They're fairly difficult to find, though. They're a very high demand tube. And again, I don't think very many of them were made. And the reason why we're showing it next to this guy here is because this 6GU7 is a lot more common and you can clearly see it was made probably in the same plant at the same time and spec wise it's almost the same tube this is a medium mu dual triode and 
and it's often used as a replacement for the 6CG7, which is the 9-pin equivalent of a 6SN7. So would you say the 12-volt 12BH7 and the 6-volt 6 6GU7 6 are very much the same tube, except one has a 6-volt heater and one has a 12-volt? I, I wouldn't say they're identical, but they're so close that they should be completely interchangeable in circuits, assuming you have a circuit that takes the correct heater voltage or applies the correct heater voltage. Right. And what is the great thing about the 6GU7? We can still find them. You can still them. find them. And there are also other amplifiers that are using these tubes, which is great to see these days. Uh, amplifiers like the uh, Schitt Folkvanger, uh, the, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, the Valhalla 2 and the uh, Freya Novel can play these dual triode tubes. And we will definitely be developing something in the future. That is going to use these, yeah. So they're really interesting. They're still available. And they're great tubes. I mean, we've already listened to them on our prototype headphone amplifier, and they sound great on there. Yeah, actually, though, that's not quite a fair statement because everything sounded great on the headphone. <laughs> that, that's true, <laughs> when yeah. When you come across <laughs> any of the tubes that you had on, you were targeting as a driver tube that sounded bad. So many of them were working on there, and, you know, either the tube worked and it sounded great or it didn't work. <laughs> so Yeah, which is part of why we're building version 2. Exactly. Okay, right. well, if you stayed to the very end, Here's some discount codes to help you out. Now, remember, we've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more, the shipping is on us. And here's some codes. And there is an easy secret code to find. Somebody cost us some money this week, and it hurt. And there's a secret code for the big bucks. I'm not giving you any more hints because both Charles and my wife get mad at me for giving away so much money. So <laughs> stay safe, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. From Vows and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>